reminding us why he's so unlikable and why people find it very difficult to root for him this is at the beginning of the recent episode of firing the kid i had to clip this because i thought this was really funny um to kind of show you guys here brendan just you know just doing what he does being brendan and being very unlikable and really reminding people that hey the chemistry that you once knew and loved on tfk has been and gone that chemistry does not exist case in point this clip yes we did because we back at it again it's the fighter in the this is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. All right, we, we're going to start this show. Look at us, show. buddy. I know, dude. Look at us. We're going to start this show. Dude, we, I, I hope your attitude's good. I hope Came your energy's from good. from Miami, so of course I'm a Miami, little tight. You do look a little tanner. Now, yeah, we've yeah. had how many yeah. days off? We the fact that Brian Callen now lives by coastal or now lives part-time in Miami. No, not part-time, actually. From what I've led to understand, I think the wife, the mother of his new children, I think she's the one that lives in Miami and he lives in LA obviously to look after his podcasting whatever career and, and obviously to stay closer to his kids that's kind of wild because I think in the past he would have never done that because of the demands of his career and being in LA <clears throat> but it goes, so it goes to show that business is kind of slowing down because he actually has time to go to Miami and live there and not feel like yes because you know these comedians they always put their career first but when your career kind of slows down you have no other option but to hang out with your family brendan case in point we've had a, a, a number of i haven't seen you since day. last so thursday friday saturday sunday monday tuesday six day off six from chatting days off i went to i was at uh patrick ben david's house did the podcast love Our him boy, love him that's my boy and he and I bet you they didn't talk with him in those six days. That's the funny thing. They probably told him themselves. They probably actually never had a conversation with him those six days. That's a really, that's a sad reflection of where that's pod and where this harmony relationships or lack thereof has gone. He went away to Miami, hang out with his family, do a pod with Patrick Ben David. And, you know, him and Papa didn't actually even conversate until they got back on the pod. He had a Memorial Day uh, party. I went. I had a little lunch at his house. In fact, wait, party and, and lunch? Yep, yep. It'd be the same thing, though. No, nope, right? no, nope, no. Nope, went twice. Wait, okay, went twice. That's so different. After the party, this is kind of like weird jealousy, which is weird because I feel like that Patrick Bet David guy. He's a bit of a dweeb, but he seems to actually like Brendan. So it's not even like he couldn't get an invite if he wanted to. If Brendan went back to Miami, he could, but he doesn't. He seems like a bit of a homebody. He's a bit lazy. He likes his creature comforts, but he kind of sounds a bit jealous he's doing that weird thing that you just do when you tease somebody when you kind of want to do what they want to do it's like let him explain his story you know what i mean let's stop cutting him off every two seconds like i'm cutting you off every two seconds i guess when i had myself a little lunch now now um when you walk into a house like that in fort lauderdale on the water with that boat slip and that that view you you do this ready you go like this you go huh i failed money does buy happiness and i failed and i failed yes and i failed now you you do the funny thing about them, they could have had all of that stuff that Patrick Bet David has without the grift, without the scams and without the hustle because of how long they've been in podcasting. It's a, both a blessing and a curse. They've been around podcasting so long, these guys. They've been with Joe Rogan's friends for so long that they're now benefiting from the afterglow, the after effects of being Rogan's friends despite being shit at what they do. Because if they started this podcast now, they'd be nowhere. But because they started it back then when podcasts weren't, there's not many around and they were one of Rogan's first friends that he kind of put on the big platform and shit and shouted them out. They're still riding that wave, the aftershocks of being Brendan's, Rogan's friends. But the sad thing about it is that nowadays, the people who are doing content now, even without Rogan's stamp, because Patrick Bet David, you know, he's obviously a scam artist and a grifter, but he's done a lot of his work on his own. He hasn't even done it with Rogan Cosign and he's still fucking got money coming out of his ass. So when you're Brian Kellen, you go visit him at his house. He's got this fucking, you know, Pablo Escobar mansion that he lives in and shit. You're probably thinking to yourself, hold on. I was doing exactly what he was doing in my own way years before. And look how much richer he is just because of timing, because he's now doing it in an era where there's way more money now. There's way more eyes on what we're doing, on what this content thing is now. Whereas before, it wasn't the case. And he's like thinking, shit, if only I didn't rape that woman, allegedly. You know that guy should be the yeah. next president of the United States. Well, I'm, I'm a I need huge you to, fan. Every time you walk in his house, I want you to bend the knee, right? Well, bend I do. your goddamn knee. I do. 
By the, and way, the other thing I love about it, I'm sorry about the microphone headphone. I just took my headphones off and it's blowing out the fucking headphones. Chin always fucking redlines this podcast, isn't it? I have to find a way of limiting my because it's hard because when I try and play clips, I have the limit the the sound set on a certain level, but then if I do limiter on the clips, it'll mean that the clips at a lower level will then not. Yeah, you know I mean it's weird anyway. But regardless, Chin always redlines the 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 fucking audio. He just puts it all on fucking red. Fucking hell, Chin. Like, allow it, bro. God damn. He's got his parents living with him, family living with him. That guy's a family man through and through. The best. He's unbelievable. I He's absolutely such a, adore him. And a genuinely, genuinely good person. Like, genuinely. The best. Everybody's got 100 people working for him. Every single one of them loves that guy. He's the best. Because, yeah, he's just great. He's I would run through a wall player. for that guy right yep. now. Yep. You too. know, he also owns the Yankees. Yeah, and he's a partial owner of the, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the real team. He's recruiting Tiger, no big deal. Yep. yep. Could, could. Tiger's, Tiger's seven, or he's eight, so yep. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It could be a good connection down the road. Yep. Hey, I want to thank you the on people. the team, right? By the way, this whole, like, this person's a great person thing, I also despise because it only seems to affect or it only seems to be something they say about people who have money and have fame. They never say these things about people that aren't famous. They only say these glowing tributes or praises for people who have money. It's never, oh, this guy's amazing who owns his own little local fucking hardware store. This guy's amazing who's got a trucking business. This guy's amazing who runs a fucking daycare. Woman's radio runs a daycare. It's only guys that have these fucking flashy social media fucking lifestyles that are suddenly the best in the world and they happen to be their fucking boys. Really? No one has anything bad to say about him. I wonder why. Because he fucking pays everybody that's around him. Anybody that isn't his fucking family, he pays to hang around him. So no wonder they have anything nice to say about him. If I paid to have my own friends, they'd probably have great things to say about me too. And I'm a fucking cunt. By the way, I want to thank the people at Dania, the Dania Beach, uh, Miami adjacent. Because it ain't Miami. It's the it's, suburbs. It's of the suburbs. And Memorial Day, you worry 25. that people aren't going to come out. They came out. And they, ah, came out they should come out though. There's like it's a holiday. Why is he being such a cunt about this whole thing? Why is he being so dismissive? Why is he being so nip? Because again, think about this with your own friends. Think if you ever had a friend that when you met him up after the weekend, first day at work on a Monday, your work colleague, and you was describing how your weekend was, and he just kept nitpicking away at what you did. <laughs> what did that? Good? Yeah, but of course it would be good. Uh, what you're surprised the Champions League final was loud. Well, duh, it was a big time. Bro, did you ask? Are you interested in what I did on the weekend or not? Or do you just want to have your turn to speak? Why are you so pressed about this? And it's, again, like I said, it's weird because that Patrick Bent David guy, he's Brendan's quote unquote friend too. He would happily have him around his house. He would happily invite him around his fucking, you know, his uh, spatial home. He's happily invite him to his fucking condominium, right? His compound, right? He'd have, he's happily have him at the fucking VHQ if he wanted to. So why is he acting as such a cunt when Brian did it? Is he just jealous that Brian's more sociable than him? Even though he's more, even though Brian, Brendan maybe thinks he's richer and cooler than Brendan, for some reason, people seem to actually like to hang around Brian. Is that why he's so jealous? Like, fucking hell, bro. Just call Patrick Ben David. You'll have you around there. Hey, I yes. guess at that, that yep. night. Our boy Colby, Colby Covington. Love him. He showed up. Love him. And uh, he's a sweetheart. I, why, why, I, By the way, I hate this narrative. I hate this theme. I hate this talking point. Oh, Colby's actually nice in real life. It doesn't matter, bro. He's a cunt in front of cameras. He's a cunt in front of the lens. He's a cunt in front of. Well, he's a cunt when we all see him. We don't all see him behind the scenes. We're not his friends. So this whole narrative, oh, he's actually really nice. He's just playing a character. Well, that's his problem then. Yes, he's benefited his career. Yes, he's probably made a lot of money from it. But unfortunately, his public perception, you only get a first, you only get a chance at a first impression once to ask regular folk that don't know who the fuck he is, is that he's a bit of an asshole. So stop telling us that he's a nice guy behind the scenes because we don't know him behind the scenes. He's not a fucking friend. He's not your friend either. You only know him because you fucking somewhat famous. So you wouldn't even know who he really was if you weren't in the opposition that you were either. We only are going by what we see. I'm sorry. He comes across like a cunt. It is what it is. You said I tell you guys this all you the said time. It. It's all an act. That, that whole thing's an act, but when you're with him... But I think Brendan likes to latch onto this because his, his way, in a roundabout way to say, it's all an act, it's all a game, it's all, it's all in the media to kind of excuse his behavior. That's my thinking. My little theory is that Brendan likes to latch onto this thing to be like, oh... 
See, people don't like me, but they don't know that behind the scenes, I'm actually really nice. I know I come across like a douche on camera. I know I bully like, you know, I know I'm a bit of a bully on the camera. I know I fucking harass. I know I'm a fucking, you know, whatever else I am. But actually behind the scenes, I'm a really nice guy. Best guy, great guy, beast of a dad, beast of a comedian, podcaster, husband, or everything in between. I'm alone. One of the He's best people sweetheart. you've ever met. Yes. Because I always was like, I don't like that trash talking stuff. No, bub. God, is he a sweetheart. And that, then that, I, that'd be like me and the Undertaker. Like, God, he comes from the underworld. Right horrendous horrendous example horrendous example that's like meeting the undertaker and not what thinking he sleeps in a funeral home huh thinking he lives in the underworld what what kind of analogy was that that's like meeting the undertaker and what actually it's a weird example he uses because the undertaker allegedly is a sweetheart and you see that on camera whenever the undertaker gets interviewed on pods He's always fucking amazing, always got great stories, always comes across really kind, really sweet, really down to earth. Actually, the whole contrast of how he pursue, how he portrays himself in wrestling, which guess what, is made up. UFC and MMA isn't made up. It's a real sport with real humans and real athletes and real people. But Colby wants to put an act on, be a cunt, and then be like, oh no, behind camera, I'm, I'm actually a real nice guy. We don't care. We only see you in front of the cameras, my friend. You know, and, like, and Tiago Alves came to my show, and he he you know he's a coach. Beat up. He's a coach at at American Top Team yeah. with Mike Brown, right? He's like Dustin Poirier's coach. Isn't it so weird that Brian, for some reason, this old, decrepit, geriatric, nearly you know wheelchair bound comedian, is the one that all UFC fighters like hanging around with? Maybe because he does that whole act of like, oh, I love men and muscles, and I'm so inferior, I'm a cock. Oh my god, fuck my wife, fuck me, type of thing that he does. But doesn't it really make you laugh that UFC fighters, bodybuilders, all these men, manly men that Brendan should be around, they actually like hanging around Brian more than they like hanging around with Brendan. Maybe that's why he's being a meanie in this clip. Maybe that's why he's being a mean girl, as someone's mentioned in the, in the fucking comments. Maybe that's why he's being a mean girl, because deep down he's pissed off and jealous that Brian went to hang out with Patrick Bet David in his fucking, you know, Florida mansion and hang out with all these fucking athletes and all these fighters and shit and got shown around and got introduced to fucking crypto kings and shit and scammers and hotties and strippers and drug dealers and all these fucking LARPers and motivational speakers. He's, all, he's in that fucking crew of grifters what that Brian wants to, Brendan wants to be involved in and they never invite him. Maybe that's why he's jealous. And I said, man, Colby's such a sweetheart. And, and Tiago goes, yeah, yeah, he's a doll. He's just like, but when, when the cameras are on, it's a different thing. It's a, no, it's a, no, it's a character. It's a character. Yeah, it's a you don't do characters. No one else does a character except for Colby Covington. And look at how it fucking played out for him. No one else does that whole character thing to a level that he does it. And look how it played out to him. Yes, it worked well, short term, got his name out there, made him a, into a bit of a star, the whole MAGA Trump thing, cool. But after a while, bro, just stop being a dickhead. You can be fucking MAGA fighter if you want, but just stop being a fucking cunt. Is that too hard to do? Clearly you can stop being it, but he clearly is a part of him that is a cunt. But then you have cunts like fucking Brendan backing him up. character yeah, and, and you said it you, you did i've told you this you for it. how long yeah you but he doesn't like me saying that how about this a little i don't know if you know this so he's been maybe because he actually is in the ufc colby covington's been in the ufc for 11 years i don't know if you know but uh 30 seconds into that leon edwards fight he broke his foot in three places yeah i knew that oh okay that's that people are like well he didn't look himself well he broke his foot no he said that after he said he said he broke his foot mm -hmm. after the fight and yeah he, he this is the thing he he mentioned it, he alluded to it, and then of course Everybody's like, yeah. The internet's like, oh bullshit, blah That's blah, a blah, real man. excuse. That's a legit excuse. Oh now look, one day with Colby Covington and suddenly you're fucking sucking on his teeth and buying into all the excuses. Whatever. Anyway, you saw the clip. You saw Brendan being a little bit of a sassy, passive aggressive mino to Brian Callen just because he hung out with the illustrious Patrick Bent David and all of his other Miami florida fucking goons absolutely hilarious i love when these guys get jealous of each other especially when it concerns things that really don't matter you know really really don't matter in the grand scheme of things but brendan
Brendan is always going to be a jealous little baby. Always going to be a jealous little baby.